The world of One Piece is a pretty wild place. It's got giant elephants with islands on their backs, floating cities in the clouds, and islands where everything is made of candy. But not everything is super obvious. Here are some mind-blowing One Piece secrets and untold facts that will have you saying, no way. Guess who is the most dangerous woman in the One Piece world? You might think it's Big Mom, right? She is definitely one of the most frightening women. After all, she was once part of the Rock's Pirates. Her name brings Run. fear to many pirates and marine legends alike, while also possessing an insanely powerful double fruit. But no, it may be someone you didn't expect. Makino, the bartender from Luffy's home island. Sure, she's a calm and innocent young woman, but what she lacks in strength, she makes up for in connections. She has enough clout to make any influencer green with envy. She's buddies with legends like Luffy, Sabo, Shanks, and Garp. If she gets even a tiny scratch, two strong Yonkos, the Navy's strongest soldier with his entire fleet, and the commander of the Revolutionary Army with his team will all come after you. Talk about petty power. Speaking of Big Mom, this freak uses men like sperm banks to manufacture as many children as she likes and sucks them away. I did the math. Big Mom is 68 and her oldest kid, Charlotte Perospero, is 50, which means she had him when she was just 18. Her youngest child is only 8 years old. So if we do the math, Big Mom had been giving birth for 42 years straight, with some of them being twins, triplets, decuplets. Not only that, one of them turned out to be half Tontara, which means Big Mom smashed with a fun-sized fairy. I'm not sure whether to be scared or impressed but not as impressed as when I found this blink and you miss it easter egg. In episode 1067, when Kid uses his damned punk, the words smoking on that big mom pack appear in one of the impact frames. Hmm, it's a tough one. Who's more surprising? Vincent Chansard for hiding this or the fans who turned detective to uncover it? Four Kids Dub is the worst thing that has ever happened to One Piece. I even made a video about it here. But have you ever wondered how this came to be? What happened was that One Piece was part of a package deal that 4Kids did where they bought the rights to it along with two other Toei anime, Ultimate Muscle and Magical Doremi. 4Kids thought they were getting something light and breezy for elementary aged kids but ended up with a violent pirate show. 4Kids tried to back out, but Toei told them to dub it anyway, so this resulted in the heavily edited version we got. In other words, it was all a complete accident. One Piece is like a crazy zoo with all kinds of wacky characters, one being Big News Morgan, who is basically a huge bird that runs the only newspaper in the One Piece world. When I first saw him, I assumed he was just another mink, but he's a regular dude who ate a devil fruit specifically the Toritori no Mi modeled albatross, and for some reason, he always stays in his hybrid form. I'm unsure why he would want to do that, especially since he can't even fly. Isn't flying the whole point of being a bird? The Straw Hats really do feel like a family, but of course, they're still a crew and every good pirate crew has its role, like a cook or navigator. Ever wonder what Zoro's role is? A lot of fans assume that he's the first mate, but only Bartolomeo, who is not the most reliable source of information, calls him that. Officially, Zoro's role is a combatant, but to me, he's more like the crew's enforcer, making tough choices to help out the crew, like when he forced Usopp to apologize to Luffy in Water 7, or stopped the Straw Hats from turning around to rescue Vivi in episode 1088, since they had their own event adventure. Another notable thing about Zoro is his long-running competition with Sanji. You may think it all started with their hunting contest on Little Garden, but what if I told you it began way back in Arlong Park? Yep, back in episode 34, everyone thought Nami killed Usopp. Zoro wanted to fight her, but Sanji stopped him. Then Sanji teased Zoro about losing a fight to Mihawk. Later, Zoro called Nami a small fry. Sanji thought Zoro was talking about her being flat-chested and got offended on her behalf. 
so it's all about Nami's treasure chest. Not all the weird powers in One Piece come from the devil fruits. For example, there's Miss Golden Week. She was in the little garden arc and used paint to hypnotize people. At first, I thought she ate some kind of paint paint fruit, but nope, she just does that on her own. It's a pretty impressive skill, but not enough to keep her from getting KO'd by a duck. Something else that's strange about Miss Golden Week is her age. Looking at her, she looks like she's 12, maybe 13. You must wonder why Baroque Works even hired a kid like her, but her official pre-time skip age is actually listed as 16, which is pretty surprising. To put that into perspective, Shirahoshi, Rebecca, and Pudding are also 16. And they seem significantly more well-developed than Miss Golden Week. Guess Golden Week must be a late bloomer. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! <laughs> Just goes to show how the art in One Piece has changed over the last few decades. Sugar also has a surprising age. She looks like a kid because she ate the Hopi Hopi no Mi that keeps her young forever, even though she's 22. You might not know this, but she is Monet's younger sister, the harpy girl from Punk Hazard. According to Oda, Doflamingo rescued the two and gave them their devil fruits. Between these two, Law and Baby Five, Doffy seems to have a preference. Is he running a pirate crew or just playing house with a bunch of lost orphan kids? So with the Wano arc now completed in both the anime and manga, I think we can all agree that it was insanely long, like the longest arc yet. It was 146 chapters long. To put that into perspective, that's the length of Arlong Park, Jaya, Shapuli, Impel Down, and Marine Ford combined into one big arc. Heck, that's even longer than some entire mangas get to last. If you remember the first arc, you may remember the villainous Marine Captain Morgan. But have you ever looked at the word written on his metal jaw? It says Möwe, which means seagull in German. This is probably a reference to how the marine's logo looks like a seagull. However, rearranging the letters also spells meow, which is funny when you remember Captain Kuro breaking Morgan's jaw. That guy literally left a lasting mark on Morgan. Throughout most of the series, you may have noticed that Luffy doesn't kill any of his opponents. In universe, Luffy has never revealed why, but Oda has explained that Luffy would rather see his enemies live to see their dreams crushed. Hmm, it makes perfect sense. For Luffy, dreams are very important. If Luffy couldn't become Pirate King, he'd probably drop dead on the spot. Several One Piece characters' names have unexpected origins, like Usopp's. The first part is derived from the Japanese word for liar, uso, reflecting his penchant for lying. The second half may reference the Greek storyteller Aesop, known for creating fables like the tortoise and the hare and the boy who cried wolf. The last one is about a boy who's always lying about a wolf attacking his sheep. And when there is a wolf, nobody believes him, just like how nobody believed Usopp when the pirates attacked Syrup Village. Plus, the island of Elbaf, where Usopp wants to go, is just fable spelled backwards. Additionally, Usopp's iconic long nose may be a reference to Pinocchio. While very different, the recent live-action One Piece series is still a fantastic adaptation adaptation of the story. Plus, it hid a few easter eggs of its own. For example, in the first episode of the Netflix series, Nami wears an outfit that looks just like the one she wore in Oda's early concept art. You know, back when Nami had a robotic arm. I guess Nami's beta design made her the Frankie of the crew. There are a lot of cool weapons out there in the One Piece world, from Mihawk's enormous sword Yoru to almost all of Zoro's swords. But one that I think gets overlooked is Law's sword Kikoku. Its name has a surprising meaning behind it. It roughly translates to English as Cry of the Ghost or Wailing of the Restless Ghost. Referring to a ghost on a quest for vengeance, this is very similar to how Law was out for revenge against Doflamingo after Rosinante's death. Speaking of Rosinante, I found an interesting easter egg about him. His ID number in the Marines was 01746. Now on its own, that doesn't mean much. 
but if you reverse the numbers, it could be read in Japanese as do shi na ten, or in other words, Rosinante. Yep, his ID number is also his name. Guess it makes it easier to remember the number. The One Piece anime has been going on for a long time, but there was a One Piece anime before Toei began adapting the anime in 1999. Yes, before that. In 1998, there was an OVA with a completely different animation style and voice cast. The director of this OVA, Goro Taniguchi, is probably best known as the director of Code Geass. But after over 20 years, he worked with One Piece again to direct Film Red. Guess it's all come full circle. If you've paid attention to the series, you'll notice that Luffy's cheerful. Even after the most significant battles, Luffy always has a smile on his face. Well, with one exception, after his battle with Usopp at Water 7, Luffy doesn't smile for another 15 chapters. That's the longest he's gone without smiling. It makes sense though, that's the first time he had to fight someone he considered a friend. Yes, a friend's betrayal can hurt, but not as much as a Gear 4 punch. Luffy first unveils his Gear 4 in Chapter 783, which was a significant hype moment when it first happened. But what you may not have noticed is the significance of that number. If you reversed it, you get 387. Luffy's Gear 2 first appeared in Chapter 387 when he fought Bluno. It seems like this was intentional. These were just a few of my favorite One Piece facts. There are plenty more out there, and if you want to see more of my One Piece hidden stories, click here.